Yo, what's happening everybody? Noah back here with another YouTube video. Here today we got some more Call of Duty Mobile. This time around we're bringing you something a little bit different though. This is going to be a more how-to slash tutorial video over my traditional gameplay videos. So quickly for you guys who are new to the channel and are unfamiliar with who I am. My name is Noah. I do YouTube full-time. I've been doing it for two years on another channel, Noah from YouTube, without the mobile. And on that page I primarily focus on console first-person shooters. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was my first ever console online shooter. I got it one year for a Christmas gift and in that one year lifespan of the game I went from a Christmas noob to the type of player who would drop Moabs every other game. So with that being said I've put in countless hours into shooter games with a controller but previous to Call of Duty Mobile coming out I had not really grinded any other mobile games. So when it came down to creating a HUD I did what felt comfortable from all of my years of playing with a controller. So with that being said guys, here is my video on the most comfortable four finger claw for beginners. Once again, I'd like to thank Call of Duty Mobile for partnering with the channel on today's video. If you guys haven't already downloaded the game, make sure to go ahead and do so with the link down in the description below. It's a free to play game and it is well worth your time. When you start up COD Mobile for the first time, they throw you into a basic tutorial. Once you're finished with that, they give you two options to play on either simple mode or advanced mode. And in order to play with the four finger claw method and to basically just shine in the multiplayer all around, you're going to want to play on the advanced mode. Once you can finally access your settings, go to controls, multiplayer mode, and then right here you'll have a button that says custom layout. You're going to go ahead and select that and for the sake of the video we're going to reset ours to the original formation right here we have a super useful button for those who play with their thumbs but since this video is about the claw method you're not going to have a need for this basically all this button does is allow you to with one touch aim in and shoot at the same time with the same control now like i said it can be useful if you are playing with your thumbs but if you're playing with the claw method, you will have one finger for aiming and one finger with firing. So it will be separate. And since we're not gonna need it, we are just gonna go ahead and hide that button. The next thing I like to do is go ahead and hide some of the buttons that are completely useless to me. Personally, I never use the team chat button and I can find it very distracting, especially when it's taking up part of my screen. So I go ahead and hide it as well. And we're just gonna throw it here in the middle. Next up is the auto run. I don't use that as well. So again, hide it, scale it down and throw it somewhere off the screen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make room in the two corners of the screen so I can place the buttons wherever I feel is most comfortable. The scoreboard here, you're really not gonna need it to be freakishly large like it is defaulted to be. So let's go ahead and scale it down to say 50%, the lowest it can possibly be, and then just drag it into the corner. Now on the other side of the screen, you will have your mini map. Now this is something you definitely do not want to scale down at all because this is one of the most important features in Call of Duty. Your mini map is honestly a secret key to success that most players don't utilize. Now you want to be able to see everything clearly on that, your position, your teammates position, and more importantly, your enemies position whenever they pop up on the radar, either from a UAV or them shooting. So to make sure everything is crystal clear, you're gonna wanna go ahead and scale this bad boy up. 150 works pretty good for me. I don't feel like it takes up too much of the screen, but I definitely feel like it's big enough that I can focus on. Now you may not have a problem with the map in this location based off of how you hold your device. A lot of people will hold it and play with their claw fingers in the middle of the screen and then their thumbs on the bottom. Me personally, I like to extend my fingers out from the top to the bottom just because that's what feels comfortable with the size of my hands. But by doing this, the spot of the map is either A, blocked off by the extra fingers that I'm not using when playing, or B, in the way of where I wanna put my other buttons. So what I like to do is actually move it over here to the center of the screen, that way, I don't have to worry about blocking it off with my hand or accidentally pressing it when I go to press other buttons. Again, I'm gonna take some of the buttons that I use less frequently. The speaker and microphone button we'll throw in the top left corner and the settings and emote button we'll throw in the top right. 
And just after a couple of small repositions, you can see that the HUD is already starting to look a lot more organized. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the bottom portion of the screen. As you can see, I moved some of the buttons that I plan on putting on the top half out of the way for now. Now I like to move my thumbstick in the bottom left corner tight like that, just because that's where my thumb rests whenever I'm hovering above it. And that's what I recommend you do. If you hover like around this part of the screen, make sure to go ahead and throw it over there. You wanna just make sure that regardless of how you hold the device, right below your thumb is the location of the analog stick. Attached to your movement control is this little dude right here. Now, however far you stretch this character is gonna be how far you'll have to move your thumb in order to activate this control. Personally, I like to keep it here, which is basically a full movement up of my thumb. So this button actually has two separate features. Its most basic is known as the auto run, but what I like to use it as is an escape from drop shots. If you guys are unfamiliar with drop shots in Call of Duty, basically you go prone mid gunfight. So you go from standing to on the ground as a mechanic to dodge enemy bullets. When you're prone on the ground, if you use your movement stick to activate this slider, it will take you from the prone position to the sprinting position. And because of that, I would definitely recommend that you have it a comfortable distance away. You wanna be able to activate it when you want and not hit it when you don't want to. Next up is the reload button. And this is gonna be something that you'll find yourself pressing a lot when playing Call of Duty. I like to scale it up a tiny little bit just so I don't miss it when I actually go to press it. And I throw it right here next to my gun HUD. So the reason why I like to keep it here is because it will not get in the way of me moving my thumb around, turning my character and aiming, but it's just close enough that I don't have to completely move my hand to press the button. All I have to do is just move my thumb down a little bit and tap it. The last two controls that you're gonna have on the bottom portion of your screen are going to be these two grenade buttons. This one you will never see unless you have fast throw grenades enabled, which personally I don't play with that on. So since I'm not gonna use it, I'm just gonna have it tucked away over there. I probably won't ever see it, so it's not gonna be a big deal. This one, however, the cancel grenade button could actually come in handy and I think right over here is a good spot for it. Again the reason behind that is it won't get in my way whenever I am throwing grenades but if I want to cancel it is just one thumb reach away. Moving on to the top coordinates of your screen are going to be the buttons you'll be pressing with both of your index fingers. Now I know traditionally with a controller you're going to aim in with your left trigger and shoot with your right trigger. Well, it's actually easier to reverse the rules of those two fingers when playing mobile. So I'm gonna actually move the lethal controls on over to the left side of the screen and keep my aiming controls on the right. Personally, I like to scale up the ADS to the full 200 so I don't accidentally miss it when I go to touch it. And similar to the thumbstick placement, I like to make sure that this is resting directly underneath my index finger. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the fire button, except on the other side the screen we're going to scale it up and make sure it's in a comfortable spot that i can just easily press it whenever i put my finger down now for your melee button you can actually do a couple things with personally i feel like knifing is a little weird in this game so i like to just scale this thing down a lot as much as i can and then i just throw it right over here in case i ever want to knife i know it's like right above my chute but typically I do not knife when in close quarter combat. Now we're on to our final two controls and you can actually place these under whichever button you want. Again, you're gonna press either one with your index finger. Personally, I like to have my crouch underneath my aim and my jump underneath my shoot. Again, we're just gonna scale both of these controls up so we don't accidentally miss them when we go to hit them. And this is the final product for my HUD layout. Moving on to the basic controls, there's only a few different settings that I switched. Joystick auto sprint, for example, is an option that I actually turned off that defaults on. My sprint sensitivity, I raised to 80. Field of view range, I moved all the way to 75. These are the graphics that I typically run the game at. The only reason that these are my settings is to conserve power. I would definitely recommend if you have a device that can run the game at max frame rate, to do so. Under sensitivity in rotation mode, I have turned speed acceleration off and turned on fixed speed instead. The reason for that is aim acceleration will always add inconsistency to your aim. 
So for the sake of your muscle memory getting better at aiming, you want it to always be consistent and that's what fixed speed will do. I still use the mid sensitivity preset, so all of my stuff is standard to your default settings. With that being said, guys, that will do it here for the video today. If you learned something new, don't hesitate to smash that like button. Let's set a goal of 1,000 likes for the video. Again, this tutorial was designed for players who use the four finger claw method. In the future, I do plan on swapping to the five finger claw method. And once I do so and become comfortable with controls, I will make sure to do an updated video on that. Thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.